Uh, my name is Sara, and uh, right now I don't live in Shavda, but I used to study here, so I have quite a, a warm feeling every time I come back here. Uh, right now I live in Malmö, Sweden's gangster city, number one. But I survive, I like it. <laughs> uh, and um, I'm going to talk to you today about marketing your game, and this is uh, this is mostly going to be like a real fast primer on where to get started and what you should do, some things that you should not be doing. Um, and since I only have about 30 minutes, I thought like, how deep can I go? And I can't go there so much into detail. So I'm also going to give you like this little brief kind of um, uh, template for doing your marketing. I mean, like, uh, what should you be doing when? So feel free to take photos. Uh, I'm going to share my slides with you uh, after I'm done. And if you got any questions, you can find uh, my Twitter handle uh, there at the bottom and my homepage. So just feel free to come talk to me after this as well. So what I will be talking about today is I will be talking to you about who I am. Uh, what have I been doing and why you should listen to me. And I will be talking about like uh, basic marketing PR tools just to get you started with your game because I assume that a lot of you who are here today are perhaps indies or you are students or you are just starting out and you feel a bit confused or you about this marketing thing and you don't really know where to start. Maybe you heard like you should have a Facebook page Maybe that's it, I don't know, uh, but this is like a basic primer. And I will also be talking about this template that I mentioned, like wh what things should you be doing when. And please keep in mind that this is not like one size fits all, this is more like basic guidelines. So you could have a game going on that's completely different from anything that I'll be talking about, something that's just that you need to figure out to do something else about a uh, goat simulator. <laughs> I'm looking at you. <laughs> OK. Uh, and of course, I will be talking about some do's and don'ts um, and do a summary and some questions. Um, so let's get going. OK, uh, so my name is Sara. Um, and my first job was a, like uh, a community manager in uh, Malmö at a game uh, company called Junebud, making uh, an MMO. And after that, I moved on to uh, I moved on to do game metrics and data at Paradox North in Stockholm. So I was part of setting up uh, the big uh, uh, metrics system in Stockholm for Paradox for like just like the basic stuff, but also individually for the titles at that time. So I've been doing a lot of metrics as well, collecting data about players. And I've been an associate producer at Tarshare Studios in Malmö. They do a lot of Little Big Planet stuff. Uh, and I think we've got some uh, former Tarshare people representing here. Yeah, Tarshare. Uh, and uh, right now I'm a freelancer at Kassan Crowd. And I've been trying to, like, when people ask me, what do you do? Uh, I'm not a programmer. Uh, I think a lot of people think you're a programmer, like out in the real world when you tell you do games. So I've been like trying to summarize what it is that I do. Um, and I try to, like, the conclusion I've come to is that I fill the gap between the players and the team. Uh, I understand the players either through data, uh, metrics or by being a community manager or doing like the marketing or handling the social media. So that's what I do. And I'm going to try to give some of the things I've learned by working with my clients and on various teams. I will be giving it to you, the lessons I learned. So um, moving on, I hope. Yeah. So how to get started? Well, um, you need to dedicate one person to do the marketing. And this is, I am assuming, like you're a team of maybe five or six developers. Because if no one is like the dedicated marketing person or the community manager, this is usually something that just falls between the, uh, the shares. It's like I've, I've seen uh, instances where like nobody really wants to do it, so nobody does it, so it doesn't get done. And to do a game today without marketing or some kind of community management, it's not something that I would 
uh, recommend anyone to do because there's just so much games coming out, so many titles on like all platforms that you need to step up your game uh, to actually get customers and players. So marketing today is even more important than ever if you want somebody to actually play your game in the end because you are, I guess most of you are making a game because you want somebody to play it. So dedicate one person to do the marketing and this usually it becomes like the person who feels most comfortable to uh, connect to other people online uh, and if you're a small team this could be on like 25 percent or on 50 percent it doesn't need to be uh, someone doing this 100 percent um, you need to dedicate one uh, person to be in charge of the marketing uh, and write down a basic strategy together. Don't just think that, oh, we will come up with something. We'll, we'll uh, I'll tweet a couple of times per day or something. The, try to take the whole team and sit together and write something down. I mean, what channels do you want to be on? What messages do you want to uh, provide your players with? Just like write something down. It doesn't have to be a Bible. It could be just a couple of pages and uh, start straight away uh, like uh, the previous uh, uh, in the previous talk uh, I'm sorry I don't remember your name yeah no uh, the one before you you well uh, Pascal yeah Pascal said something great and he said that uh, unfortunately a lot of uh, his clients come to him like after most of the work is done I don't want to like stick the monetization model on top of the game and that's sometimes that's also the case for me uh, that people come to me when they're done and they want to paste the marketing on it and that's not really the way I work I mean, maybe some big studios they work like that I don't know but I've seen the best results when you think about marketing the whole way through the whole process. I mean, start early because it takes time to build an awareness about your game and it takes time to find your audience. So just start right away. Don't wait until like <laughs> the week before you launch your game. Um, and you need to find out what makes you special because there is such a big competition out there. You need to find out like what is special about your game? What is special about your team? You need to find your voice, your way of posting stuff, your way of saying things, your way of taking screenshots. Uh, you need to make something that separates you from all the other people out there. And define your audience, like with your marketing strategy, who is it that you want to reach? Um, either I guess you want to reach like the players or you want to reach other game developers. And there's a really big difference because other um, I can see now that it's a bit broken. <laughs> Stuff ends up here, but I guess you can see it anyways. I mean, if your goal is to reach players, then you should communicate on other channels than if you are reach, trying to reach other game developers with your content. For example, players are most likely not going to read the stuff that you post on uh, Gamma Sutra, while other game developers will be doing that. So try to define this like a huge difference. Do you want to reach players or other game developers? Mm. Okay, you got to choose your channels, um, what fits your purposes, and I'm going to start with like the basic channels, and you need to have a good, <laughs> proper web page. This is something I've seen a couple of times, uh, studios that don't have a working web page. Uh, let's say you are going out there to pitch your game for publishers, or uh, you are showcasing your game for uh, an investor, you need to have a proper web page. It just looks really unprofessional not to have a web page. Um, and I would say that today it's just so simple to get started with WordPress or Squarespace that there is no really no excuse not to have just the most basic web page ever. And don't try to invent the wheel. Uh, just like pick a theme and install it and you are good to go. Like don't put a programmer on coding a web page for like one month. I'm sure you need that guy or girl somewhere else in your project. Um, and make sure it's responsive. I've seen like so many times people who are uh, making even like mobile games and they don't have uh, a page that looks good when you open it in a mobile phone. Uh, it just comes across as very unprofessional. So just 
try it out in your own iPhones when you're done installing the theme to make sure that it looks good. Mm? And make sure that you have Google Analytics. It's really easy to integrate into both WordPress and to Squarespace. And this way you can track like everything that's happening on your web page. And uh, since I love metrics, uh, I think that you should be tracking everything you could possibly track to know and understand your customers. What are you doing on your page? What do they think about your game? How are they behaving on your page? Um, and keep it updated. This is like no excuses. And this could be like the number one mistake I see like out with small studios. They get a web page and it sort of looks good, but then they never update it. And this just gives the impression of a ghost town. And if you come across a web page for a studio and it hasn't been updated in one like one year, perhaps you start thinking that this is not a serious company. Uh, and if it, you don't like feel the trust for this company, then let's say it's a free-to-play game, then perhaps you don't want to spend any money in it because if they don't update their web page, perhaps they're like going out of business or are they still in business? So keep it updated. It doesn't have to be much, just make sure to update it. Mm. So social media. Uh, you should have a Facebook page and a, one, a really smart trick that I learned from my friend Johan sitting here um, is that invite every one of your team to become an admin because this way everyone in the team can invite their friends to the page and you could reach just so much more people who could potentially like your page or see your page and spread the word. So this is really important. Don't just only make the marketing or the community manager admin for the Facebook page. Uh, you should get a Twitter so you can start talking to journalists and other people that you should be talking to about your game. Uh, it could also be a good idea to have member spef specific Twitter accounts. And this is of course if people feel that they can actually like be on Twitter and they feel comfortable there because not everyone feels comfortable on Twitter. Uh, some people just think it's just too noisy or just too much of a mess. Uh, but I mean, talk to your team, see what they think and feel, because different members of the team have different things they can bring to the table. Uh, and I think that Mojang, they did a pretty good thing with their Twitter accounts when they branded, like every member of the Mojang team had this uh, drawn little cute image of themselves on Twitter. And this way you could really feel like who is part of the Mojang team. And if you started following one of them and you wanted like to find more Mojang people to follow, you could just like see on the profile pictures who are part of the team. And that just like unifies your image outwards towards the players. Uh, and uh, YouTube, a tra your trailer today is like super, super important. And you know, games, they are actually <laughs> almost every 99% of the times, it's like moving stuff. So something that shows your game moving is a better way to show off your game than just static images. So GIFs and uh, tr like trailers, really good to help your game just get out there. And I was talking to one of my clients, um, they made uh, uh, the, this huge mobile hit, it was called Smash Hit, uh, the mediocre game studio. And I asked them, like, what is the one most important marketing asset uh, do you think? And they said, like, the trailer, the trailer is just so important. And, you know, kids, kids today, uh, when they are interested about the game, they, like, they don't read about it. They go to YouTube, search for it, and then they view the trailer or a Let's Play or just like someone streaming it. So you need to have a good trailer out there, moving images. Mm? And then um, Instagram, Wine, Reddit, forums, like whatever works for you, but this is like the extra stuff. Um, I know that Simogo, they have been pretty active, uh, they have been pretty active on Wine, uh, and they do this short little uh, movies there. I uh, think it's really nice. You need to just feel like what fits your studio and your games. Mm. And this is like a question that I get <laughs> quite often. Should you have multiple Facebook pages, like one for your studio and one for your game and so on? And my conclusion is that yes, you should actually absolutely have more than just one page. You should not uh, like have your company page and then 
uh, put everything about all your games just in there. The best thing is to actually create like one for the game and one for your company. Um, and there are like there are some some good things about this and some bad things, but I, I don't really have time to go into this, but from my experience, it's a good thing to separate your pages. And if you got questions about this, just please come talk to me after this, because we're running a bit short on time here. Mm -hmm. And this is just super important. This is like uh, with almost all the clients I have, uh, I've seen this, like they lack a newsletter and some of you might be thinking like oh newsletters that is like so 2002 or I don't know uh, but the thing is that newsletters are still like really important and it's a really good investment uh, return on investment uh, there are a lot of <coughs> different kinds of uh, newsletter services out there uh, the most common and most trusted there are campaign monitor and mailchimp and it's so easy to set up an account and just start collecting email addresses from people interested in your company or in your games and then keep these people updated not spamming them but just start collecting their email addresses um, because a lot of people like um, usually you say that a tweet is dead within 15 minutes. If someone hasn't like responded to your tweet or retweeted it or something, it's dead within 15 minutes. And Facebook is becoming even more uh, picky about what to show to your friends. So even if you have like 10,000 followers on Facebook and you post something, it does not mean that 10,000 people will see it. And that number is like shrinking every day. <coughs> So a newsletter is actually a way for you to get into somebody's mailbox and they actually they want to see what you are saying and they're going to probably look at it. I mean, it's usually like the numbers, of course, not everyone is going to open it, but a newsletter is just an awesome thing that doesn't cost you much and most developers tend to forget about it. Make it easy for your players to sign up and uh, something about this, like a lot of journalists, uh, they don't have time to go to people's web pages or they miss your tweet in their Twitter flow, but it's a way for you to reach the journalists as well that subscribe to your list just to, you know, and it could be, no, I'm not calling them lazy, but they, they want to have like, they want to have information served to them as well. And this is a way of helping you to serve uh, information to the journalists. Mm -hmm. And if someone invites you to your inbox, I think that's a pretty like that's a big thing today. That someone says, "Yes, I want you to be sending me stuff to my inbox." Uh, don't screw it up. I mean, test your emails over and over again to your friends and in different kinds of inboxes like Gmail, Hotmail, Outlook, and so on to make sure it looks perfect and no spelling errors before you send it away and it is a bit like scary to press send when you know that you could have like 50 or 80,000 people who's gonna potentially look at your email uh, so and all right let's say you got the foundations so what are you gonna do now well this is something that the person working with marketing or community management or press within your company uh, should be doing sooner or later um, preferably as soon as possible and that's to build your own press list. And let's say you make a mobile game, uh, then you need to uh, find all the pages and all the sites writing about mobile games and reviewing them or just like the news sources uh, and start to like find out who are you, who do you want to connect with on this site? What journalists do you want to connect with? Because if you start building some kind of relationship now, let's say it's a year to your release or half a year, you need to start building the relationship now. You need to find these people before its release, before you actually need them to respond to your email. And this is also a good thing about Twitter, because Twitter lets you come into contact with people you will probably never ever get the chance to speak to uh, in another way. So start socializing with the press and it's, uh, it's going to be a really good thing when it's 
actually time for you to send them your game or your press release and ask them to review your game. And this takes time. Uh, I've been doing this for a couple of companies and it's not something you want to do like on the release date because sometimes email addresses are invalid or a journalist has moved from one like company to another and you need to track them down or someone doesn't really want to give you your email address. So uh, takes time. So start building on your list as soon as possible. And as I mentioned earlier, you need to connect to influencers on social media and by email. And it's really hard to email someone and just say, hello, here I am, this is our game. Uh, we're gonna release within a year, but you can have some screenshots if you want to, because that game is most likely never gonna be answered. Uh, email is most likely never gonna be answered or read. You need to have some kind of personal connection to these people and the press is usually really friendly and they want to deliver something really good to their readers. So you need to give them like really good material as well. And always keep that in mind if you are talking to the press, like don't waste their time. Give them what give them good stuff and give them things that you think that they would like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and be kind, persistent, and make their job easy. Uh, like nobody who rev who writes for the press wants to get like uh, a press release that's two pages long and doesn't include any images and doesn't have like the vital information about the game. So just be straight to the point, be kind, and try to like think about it like you are selling the game to them. And if you have a story, perhaps be behind your company or behind your team, try to think about it like, uh, could this story uh, potentially be something that could help uh, this news site get more clicks or sell more uh, numbers? Think about it like that. Try to do the job for the press, like for them, because they're gonna love you for it, for actually not like taking their time, but actually adding value to their job and to their life and their site. Keep that in mind. Um, yeah, okay, so let's say you got all of this. So then it's time to work. And maybe you're thinking like, all right, what am I gonna do now? Uh, and good news, there is actually a template, sort of, that you can follow. Um, this is something that I've been following. And if you like, I don't know if someone here follows me on Twitter or Facebook or something, uh, but I've been following this template on my, like my personal Twitter and my web page as well. Um, and I've been, I'm gonna try to uh, let you in on how I think. So like the marketing cycle, it has like different stages and this is uh, the hype building up here. And this is gonna be the first time ever I use like animations in uh, a PowerPoint presentation. And he even had this little spinning thing before, but I removed it last night, uh, luckily. So just let's hope everything works. Um, so the first phase is like something is coming. And this is actually the only phase in your marketing or in your development that you should or you could be a bit secretive about what you do. Um, I think that Simogo, they did a really cool thing when they were like trying to get the word out there about Year Walk, uh, the game Year Walk. Um, they had like, uh, if I remember correctly, it was like, uh, images, like really gritty black and white images showing up on the web page. I think there's like a hand covered in dirt, like on the ground, and inside the hand it was written like Lake Weary or something. It was like year walk, what you know, you mess up the letters, dot com. And people got like really interested, like what is this? I, I don't understand, is this a new game or is it like what's going on? So you get people interested. And um, this is like the stage where you could have teaser screens or your teaser concept art or like don't 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 overdo it but this is the like you can be really creative here you can have a countdown or like you you're creative you've figured it out and this usually ends with like a teaser trailer um where you kind of like announce what you're working on but uh yeah a teaser trailer and after that it's like this is this is like the biggest part of your marketing. Um, and this is work in progress. This is you writing your dev blog. This is you showing the work, work in progress. This is you uh, letting the fans know the team. Uh, 
you just like basically you have fun and this is this is most mostly people think about this when they think about marketing um, and this is I think this is like the most the fun part of it because now you can talk and let people in like don't have too many secrets if you are a small studio take that to your advantage like you you don't have anyone stopping you from telling you actually what you want unless you have a big publisher or something with you and then of course respect them uh, and the stage after that is the final fixes stage and this is like where you prepare the final fixes this is perhaps you having uh, some kind of uh, small party that's like next week it's going live you need to show them that you are soon to deliver something awesome this is the final fine fine tuning and this is like we can ramp up your hype and uh, after that uh, a release trailer some companies they have their release trailer out there like two days before the game is actually released or like one day before or so on uh, just to like build the final hype and some uh, companies release the release trailer on the release day um, and this is the release and actually there's not that much you can do uh, of course you can be creative but this is like the day when you post on your Facebook page like look I made a game go and buy it and a lot of people when they think about marketing they only think uh, about this part as well um, and if you only focus all your marketing efforts and social media efforts on the release part, I mean, look how much time uh, and opportunities you are missing. Because, like, what if on your release date you send your press release to like all the cool press people that you found, and exactly like this week or this day, uh, someone is sick, uh, uh, so they don't read your email, or that day, like another big title is launching, or it's like. I don't know, uh, the Sweden game conference is that week or like you have all this, like if you speak about your game and get it out there all this time, you have so much bigger opportunity of people actually noticing your game and pick it up, picking your game up. Don't let this little uh, slice here be the only time where you talk about your game. Uh, and then after that, it comes the summary phase. And this is the phase that, uh, People usually, uh, they, how should I put it? They go out to all the places where they, uh, games has gotten a review and they collect that and put that on their web pages. They're like, look, this is where we got the reviews. This is what people thought about us. And this is also uh, like uh, your chance to post stuff like how it was done, things that didn't made it into the final game, perhaps some like little quirky YouTube thing about like your release party or something. Um, and after that, it comes the community phase. And the community phase, this is the phase when you, you're like, you're maintaining the game, you're updating it, you're doing the, the, like the big part of the community management on the forums, you have sales, uh, you just show off like the cool things people did with your game. It could be like someone who made a tattoo with, your, like, with art from your game and so on. And this, this phase could actually go on like forever if you are, if you are like a game studio that has uh, that's releasing games for a lot of years. I mean, this phase could go on for quite some time. And, and then that little square over there is uh, the starting of your next game. So this is usually what I follow, both for like when I do things for myself and when I do things for customers. And this also shows the importance of starting early because you can't just go to the release and thinking like, all right, now we're gonna get want to get the game out there because it takes time. As you can see, it takes just so much time to get people aware about your game, both players and the press. And some things to avoid. Let's wrap it up. Uh, radio silence, as I was talking about before. Don't turn your dev blog into a ghost town. It just doesn't. It doesn't look nice, and it can't do anything good. <coughs> writing long emails to the press uh, they are really really busy like usually someone working for a big uh, gaming site gets like 40 or 50 emails a day and you don't want to waste their time so just be 
like be friendly, be clear, get to the point, include like everything. Don't ask them if they would want to have a key for your game. Just give it away. Um, <coughs> and update always with photos on Twitter and Facebook. Like don't post just links and a bit of text or just a wall of text because the algorithms on Facebook, they will probably downrate that kind of content and it won't be shown to as many people as you could show it to potentially. Mm, okay, so things you should be doing instead. Um, everything you post needs to have uh, needs to offer a value for your audience. Um, and one example of this is uh, I don't know if you've seen like this big uh, document of uh, Swedish game developers, like this Google Docs that goes around. Uh, I'm the person behind that document, and. Uh, when I post that document, I get like 200 likes together, like on all my channels, and s like a huge amount of retweets and so on. And if I just post something about me, I get, I don't know, maybe five likes <laughs> or something. And this just shows that if something has value for other people, then they are just so much more likely to share that stuff. And you need to think about your audience. Will they share this? Does this have something of value? Um, you need to find your voice as a studio or the voice you want to have when you talk about your game. And this, like I said, could be everything for how you take screenshots to the language or copy that you use when you post on Facebook. And this is something that takes time. This is not perhaps something that you do with your first game, but you need to start searching for your voice or what makes you unique. Like as soon as you actually take your team and start making your first game because it could take like years to find what makes you recognizable on the internet. If someone sees a post about you or a screenshot from your games, they should be able to tell like immediately this was made by um, game company uh, X, Y, Z. You need to be recognizable out there. So start searching for your voice. Uh, analyze what's working and what's not. Um, you should track everything you do, like use Facebook Insights, where you can see how did your post perform. Use Google Analytics to see what are people actually doing on your web page. Uh, use Twitter Analytics to see what's going on there. There are some great plugins that you could use to uh, track data from all your channels. And except for the first part in the marketing cycle, don't have so many secrets. Like people actually want to know stuff about you, so let them in, be personal. Um, I think I got a small summary here as well. Oh, nice. Uh, but most importantly of all, keep working because marketing and PR, it takes time. Uh, there is really no like magic silver bullet that could make you famous overnight or give you 200 installs in one week. And this is really important to understand. Just like it takes time to make a really good and polished game, it takes time to do good marketing. And it's not something that you could do just overnight. So start working with your marketing at the same time you start working with your game or in the same time as soon as you have a team and start thinking about your game. And a quick summary. Uh, dedicate one team member to do the marketing. Doesn't need to be 100%. If you're a small team, you probably want to have your people doing more than just one thing. But it needs to be like someone's responsibility. And also uh, set the basics with your social media and your homepage uh, and the newsletter and so on. Uh, reach out and start building your press list. Really important. You don't want to do this like on your launch week, trust me. Uh, and the stuff that you share, it should be valuable or it should be fun or it should be interesting. And different kind of people find different stuff, valuable, fun or interesting. So like you probably don't want to post uh, an in-depth piece on programming uh, on your like game's Facebook page because your players 
might not appreciate that, even if the gaming, like the game developer community would appreciate that. So think about what content should you post where. And analyze what you're doing. There are a lot of really cool things you could do with like Google Analytics. Uh, okay, mad skills, lit hacks, tips. Uh, one final thing, ask people to like and share. I know it's like really cheesy, but it actually works. And there is like, this is backed up by science. And I tried it with my clients as well. When I ask uh, people to like or share or leave a comment, they actually do it. It's like put a small call to action in there and it works. And like, you can get this for free. Don't waste your opportunity for a like or a share. Uh, feel free to email me <coughs> if you got any questions.